when women talk about having a fallen bladder, maybe they experience it themselves or have had a family member, a friend uh, with a, uh, quote, fallen bladder. What they're usually referring to is something that we call pelvic organ prolapse. Uh, when we say pelvic organ prolapse, sometimes just abbreviated as POP, but when we talk about pelvic organ prolapse, what we're usually talking about is some pelvic organ, some pelvic structure, uh, and that would include something like the bladder or the uterus if a woman hasn't had a hysterectomy, sometimes the intestines, particularly after a hysterectomy, or the rectum. All of these are pelvic organs, and they can push into the vagina. When they push into the vagina, a woman may sense that as a vaginal bulge or vaginal pressure, or, or maybe even notice and, and see something sort of pushing out of the vagina. And that vaginal bulge is almost always a sign of pelvic organ prolapse. We describe that vaginal bulge as what's actually behind it. What, what, if a woman or a pro healthcare provider sees a vaginal bulge, what they're actually seeing is the vaginal tissue being pushed out and what's doing the pushing, what's behind that vaginal bulge, tells us a lot about how we can treat it and what the symptoms might be. If it's the bladder, patients oftentimes will have bladder symptoms, potentially frequent urination or urgent urination, or sometimes even difficulty with urination. If it's the rectum that's pushing in, patients may have difficulty with having bowel movements and may even have to push on that vaginal bulge in order to have a bowel movement. We call that splinting. But sometimes it's just the vaginal bulge itself or the pressure or the discomfort that's associated with that. And so many women may have either pelvic pressure or vaginal pressure or pelvic pain or even pain with sexual intercourse. All of these can be associated with prolapse. It's important to note that just because someone has prolapse doesn't mean that it has to be treated. So very mild prolapse, maybe where a woman uh, uh, with a mirror or, or at the time of a pelvic exam, they may notice some mild bulge in the vagina. But if it's not causing any symptoms, if there's uh, no difficulty with urination, uh, if they're not having to push up on anything in order to urinate or have a bowel movement, if there's no pelvic pressure or pelvic pain, or vaginal pressure or vaginal pain, then a woman may simply decide that it's something that they want to keep an eye on. And if it doesn't get any worse, then it doesn't require treatment. However, if patients are having symptoms, if they are having discomfort, and again, sometimes that discomfort is simply not wanting to have a vaginal bulge, then there are treatments. Uh, what sometimes will be used are little devices called pessaries, and pessaries are oftentimes maybe shaped as a ring or shaped as a donut or shaped as a square uh, or cube, I should say. And these are little foam rubber devices that can actually be placed into the vagina and essentially keep that prolapse, keep that bulge from coming out. Um, some people tolerate these very well. Um, some patients don't tolerate these as well. Uh, pelvic organ prolapse is often treated with surgery as well. Uh, the surgery depends a lot on what type of prolapse, how far out it is, and what part of the vagina is prolapsing. But oftentimes we do treat pelvic organ prolapse with surgeries. But sort of an important lesson is that uh, when dealing with pelvic organ prolapse, very often it's the bother of the woman that really matters. If a patient is not bothered by pelvic organ prolapse, it may be something that she can safely observe. If a woman is bothered by pelvic organ prolapse, then oftentimes it will warrant uh, a treatment.